California man uh, who subscribed to the QAnon beliefs, uh, you know, about child abuse and, and DNA, serpent DNA, and, and monsters coming to kill us, um, has been arrested and charged for brutally killing uh, his two young children. So this was last week in Matthew Taylor Coleman. Um, he, he was convinced that an evil spirit was gonna be taken over his children and maybe his wife. And unless he took action, this was just gonna this was gonna take over. So uh, from the Washington Post, Coleman located his two children, he took his two children, loaded his two children into a car, two year old son and a 10 month old daughter uh, into a Mercedes Sprinter camper van. This is what an FBI agent said in court documents. Um, and Coleman didn't have a car seat for his daughter, the 10 month old, so he just put her into a box. So he drove from Santa Barbara where they were down to Rosarito, Mexico, um, just south of the border down in Mexico. And there he shot each of his children in the chest with a spear fishing gun. And then he moved in through the bodies into some bush and decided to come back home. So more from the Washington Post. After Coleman left home on Saturday, his wife called Santa Barbara police to report that her husband had taken their children and wasn't answering her text messages. This is what she said in her affidavit. The wife identified as AC in the document told the officer that she did not believe that her husband would hurt the children or that they were in any danger. She said that Coleman would eventually return. And when the officer offered to meet her in person, she then declined. But then the next day, she found that her children were still missing along with her husband. So that's when she officially reported them missing. So two days after he left, Coleman re-entered the United States without the children. Federal agents detained him, noting what appeared to be blood on his van's registration papers. Again, that's from the court records. Um, so. Once they interrogated him and once looked into exactly what happened, considering it was pretty obvious that a crime was committed here, he did confess to killing his two children when he interviewed with the FBI. And this was his explanation of the reasons why. He said that he had been enlightened by the extremist group QAnon and the Illuminati, both baseless theories that claim secret elites are maliciously controlling national and world affairs from the shadows. He had received visions and signs revealing that his wife had, quote, possessed serpent DNA. Which she passed on to their children, according to the uh, affidavit yet again. So he said by killing them, um, he allegedly said he was saving the world from monsters. So he's a 40 year old guy, he taught surf classes out in Santa Barbara. So he was, in, many people put their children in his care out on the water. So um, it, it, it's the first thing that came to me was thinking, you know, we've got summer camp things happening, we're returning to school, and you never really know the types of things that these Maybe educators, uh, teachers, and and people that you put in the care your children in the care of, what their beliefs are, and then what they may do in response to those beliefs. And this guy did it to his own children. And I just want to I just want to just point out one thing: if this was a, a a nationwide cultist group of people that have taught enough of these other folks that. This other opposite, this opposing political party and believers of that particular ideology are stealing kids away, and somehow serpent DNA is is developing within their bodies after all this time. This guy's 40 years old, and he's just now thinking that his wife has some serpent DNA. When previous to that, I'm not sure what kind of DNA he thought she had, but now it's passed on to children, and it's just poisonous thought process somehow convinces people that didn't take it to this next level where violence is the next answer, and now that. The world hasn't been taken over by monsters. Does he still believe that if he had a couple of the kids or maybe he's running his surf camp again, that maybe there's some like yellowish eyes that he's gonna start seeing in these kids faces to the next complete another murderous trip down to Mexico? I don't know, I don't know and I don't know how to stop it. I'm not sure which kind of legislation or what kind of, of, of public service announcements need to be spread far and wide before we stop believing this. It's frustrating. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what what is there to say about a story like this? It's just, you know, when you see, I mean, he's clearly having like some sort of psychotic break or something, you know, like it, I mean, assuming he was kind of relatively normal before, you know, when when he married this woman and 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 had the children, um, and yeah, I mean, it's just uh, it's. It's we live in a very we live in a very strange time. We live in a very alienated time. Um, we we're seeing deaths of despair uh, rising uh, all over the country. Um, people are angry, afraid, uh, feel alone, and that's just a cocktail for 
uh, psychotic breaks like this and 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 violent acts and, and outbursts and, and things like that. So I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't even know how to react to a story like this. It's just, it's, it's, it's awful. How do you contain it? How do you contain it, you know? No, and, and first of all, can we just say like, why does it have to be the wife who's got the lizard blood? Like, of course, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah blame my wife. You've got lizard blood, fool. You've got lizard blood, clearly. Uh, you're gonna do a heinous act like this and kill two little children. Just just egregious, I mean, just the details of this are disgusting and upsetting and terrifying. And like, my only solace is like, well, maybe the children were too young to, you know, as something just like, you, you know, like, you know, just, just trying to make myself feel better about the way in which they were murdered. Um, but I absolutely think that is correct in terms of this cocktail of when you have people under, you know, in an unprecedented moment, both politically and health wise, right? That folks are falling down the rabbit hole left and right. And it's what has led to um, the, what led to January 6th, let's be real. It's what's led to a lot of this anti-vax stuff coming out of the woodwork, which is on top of the white supremacy that came out of the woodwork to support Donald Trump. I mean, it's all been festered and the right wing loves it and plays into it. and. Any kind of monitoring, you know, whether it's Southern Poverty Law Center, if it's any kind of like shutdown of like conspiracy theory uh, uh, websites, that's all seen as, oh, that's censorship. Yeah. That's this and that, and it's like, no. And and I and I really believe that the the long term answer. There's a few things. I mean, one thing, there need to be more mental health services for people. We're talking, you know, as many have you met God as. Have you seen a doctor? And the answer is probably no, because most people don't have good accessible healthcare that they can, you know, affordably uh, 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 speak to a healthcare professional or a mental health specialist. So that's number one. And number two is I'm not for the strict monitoring of people through the internet, but I am for the breakup of big tech, which I absolutely believe will will tamp down, damp down the amount of conspiracies that are allowed to spread so quickly and so rapidly uh, through our community, through through our country. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think yeah. that on, on on that point, I mean, I think that the um, you're absolutely right to to point out that that the presence of these large yeah. tech uh, monopolies that um, can profit off of this kind of thing uh, creates an incentive structure that. Um, Riles us up. I mean, it's like what it's like what the the best way to get people uh, to click on stuff on the internet is to rile them up, to get them angry, afraid, uh, outraged, and things like that. And I mean, I think that the 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 answer is some form of democratization of this kind of thing that we can take control of it because right now we have zero control over it. Yeah. Um, it's all just so. Wait, uh, do do know, tech companies three dudes. do tech companies and social media sites? Benefit that much from these fringe groups having an open forum there? Because I mean, look, there's tons and tons and tons of users and profiles on here. So if these types of things are eliminated or at least policed or, or, or tamped down, as you guys were saying, that destroys their profit structure. I don't see that. Yes, well, it, it does. It reduces it because yeah. it takes a lot of it takes a lot of manpower to police those. Um, you know, it's it's very costly to monitor everything that's being posted on Facebook all the time, um, and you know you need actual people to do it. Um, yeah. And then uh, and then it just reduces the amount of engagement that they get on 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 their platforms, just because, you know. That's the thing that gets people. I mean, that's been that, that's the been the issue with YouTube forever, right? Is that like um, the stuff that gets people the most riled up, the most angry, um, is the stuff that people will uh, watch the most. And yeah. the same mm -hmm. with Facebook and same with all these things. And that's just it's it's been that's the, and that just when when the profit motive is there um, for that kind of thing, uh, they'll just maximize it as much as possible. And this isn't yeah. just true of the United States; it's true everywhere. Yeah, and they say they're cracking down on it, but they're not. It's it, what what I think is it's ultimately needs to be out of their hands. It needs to be out of individual corporations' hands. And I know we get used to this sort of like semantic battle with the right of like, well, Twitter's a private company, they can boot Trump all they want. And man, I am so glad that Trump is not on Twitter. But I hope to get to a point. There was maybe a sweet spot of the internet. We've definitely entered into the sour. This needs to be out of my mouth. Oh my god! Like what? Like my? You know? I feel like it's like one of those like suck those like little suckers jawbreakers. Mm -hmm. Anywho, <laughs> um, 
I feel so, so, but the other thing is like, it's not gonna eliminate conspiracies or conspiracy theories no. or white nationalists or anything like that. But most times people aren't jumping to the 8chan or the whatever. They are on ramping, they're being on ramped, they have gatekeepers, they're, they're being slowly indoctrinated through YouTube and through Facebook and through other platforms that are their first foray. Then they go down the rabbit hole, right? Or through even Google searches, right? So all of these companies, if we had more of a democratized internet, you bet that this stuff would spread. We know fake news spreads, it's something like 400 times faster than a real news story. You're Which is in, you're like, <laughs> how the hell do we combat that? You know, yeah. um, but the answer that's the long answer is through a lot of this. The short answer is like, people also need a safe way to report their friends and family. And I I know this sounds like like we're snitching on people. No, if there was a safe way and a and a, and a way to tell somebody, right? Tell local authorities who you knew weren't gonna then come in guns blazing and shoot your loved one. But if there was a way that we could talk about somebody who we are afraid might harm someone or we're afraid is going down the wrong path, imagine, like imagine if we had those kinds of mental health services available to us. Leadership, because that's the other part of it. I mean, if it's not monitoring, because then it's one of those things where if you have this type of thought process and then you wanna have some kind of, of a system or structure in place to limit it, then it's like it fulfills their whole profit, their, their prophecy that oh, the Big Brother's coming to get you. Wait until they come to monitor us next. And yeah, if monitoring starts happening, when it comes to things like child porn, people get busted with that stuff on their computers, or any of this trafficking of humans, that stuff gets monitored. And I don't think there's too many people that go, I can't believe they stopped that child molester, that guy who had seven children in his van. If you're gonna be on that side, you're on that side when it comes to things like this too. If you don't want people like whatever Coleman killing his kids and then working with other children in the meantime. It's, it's <laughs> I don't know man, I, I know it's a hard fine line to go across because nobody wants to be monitored, nobody wants to be watched because then of course there's gonna be overreach, of course there's gonna be law enforcement that wants to inject their own thought processes into it and it sucks. There's gotta be some other way our society has to care and not just say we care about kids. I don't know, man. It, 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 hurt, it hurt my feelings just reading about all that. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.